Well, the process that we are following in Vermont is we uh, want to persuade the legislature to call a statewide convention uh, proportionate to population to consider one and only one issue articles of secession. We think we would need probably a two-thirds uh, majority vote, not a simple majority, because the name of the game is acceptance and credibility, not only in Washington, but the rest of the United States, and indeed the, the rest of the world. I mean, armed with that, uh, that uh, uh, secession vote, uh, we would then start to behave as though uh, we were independent. We would simultaneously, simultaneously seek diplomatic uh, recognition, maybe in Ottawa, uh, in London, um, uh, Bern, and other parts of the world sympathetic uh, uh, to our cause. Uh, but do, you know, do I think it's possible? Is it practical? Well, a lot of people look at a, a tiny state like Vermont, which has only 625,000 people, and say, we couldn't survive economically. But that turns out to be really nonsense, because of the 200 uh, independent nation states in the world, 50 of them are actually uh, smaller than, uh, than tiny Vermont. And of the 10 richest countries in the world measured by uh, per capita income, uh, Liechtenstein, uh, Luxembourg, uh, Iceland, Bermuda, and the Channel Islands uh, are all smaller than uh, Vermont. So n our, our position is not only would Vermont uh, uh, be able to survive, it would indeed thrive under um, political independence. Okay, Daniel, what's your take on that? Do you think that it could be a problem as far as natural resources? Because obviously there are different types of natural resources. If you look at the 50 states, um, perhaps a state like Texas that has oil would do uh, very well, but then we look at some other states that do not have the natural resources. Wouldn't that lead to more conflicts between these, let's say, 50 nation states? I, I doubt it very seriously. I mean, while we're talking about secession here, which is merely political separation, we're not talking about separatism. Uh, there's, there is this misconception, particularly uh, through, from the opponents of, of independence, where they believed that overnight suddenly there would be a wall thrown up and, and there would be no trade. And, and our, our take here in Texas is that we are, even under the current economic stresses that the United States is under, Texas is prosperous. And with an economy as robust as the one that Texas has and as replete with natural resources as we are, uh, we, we would seek to trade with, with virtually anybody who would trade with us. Uh, we, we would actually enhance our economic prosperity. Now, if you're talking in the larger sense of the United States and other states, that would be a question that would have to be put to them. But Texas will have an open-door policy for trading. We will trade with anyone who will trade with us on a fair basis. Okay, let me turn to Dr. Naylor. Dr. Naylor, do you and think maybe that... Maybe we should mention, Daniel... Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Doctor. Oh, I was just going to follow up on Daniel's point that uh, as we speak, uh, Texas, Alaska, and Vermont are actually in serious discussions about a, a trade and tra free trade and travel treaty once we are free and independent republics. Okay, so you don't think that it would give rise to more conflict when you have all of these nation states next to each other and obviously trying to protect their own interests. Uh, wouldn't that increase the possibility of conflict? Well, see, I don't think that we would end up necessarily with 50 independent states. Uh, one of my fantasies would be for uh, Vermont to team up with neighboring New Hampshire and Maine and the Atlantic provinces of Canada, create a little country about the size of uh, Denmark in terms of population. I could see uh, a variety of different regions, so I don't think we will end up with 50 independent states. Okay, now Dr. Naylor, I only have a couple of minutes left. I want you to tell me, how did, do you see, how likely do you think that this would happen, succeeding from the Union within the next couple of decades? Oh, I think it's going to happen in a shorter period than the next couple of decades, uh, because I think the, uh, the Titanic, uh, the American empire is going down. It's lost its moral authority, it's unsustainable, it's ungovernable and unfixable. And so the question is, does Vermont go down with the Titanic or does it seek other options? And we okay. think secession is a viable option and I expect it to happen within the next 10 years. Okay, 
And on that note, we'll just have to uh, wait and see exactly what goes on. I'd like to thank Thomas Naylor and David Miller for being with me for that segment of tonight's news analysis.